welcome to this week's newsletter. A um, few things to run through this week. We're going to try and keep it as short and as quick as possible uh, so you don't fall asleep. So we're going to start off with the events board in partnership with Driving Auto Centres just to see what's coming up this weekend. Um, so Saturday, men's medal. It is actually a men's and a ladies medal. I don't know why Dan hasn't put ladies on there. We'll blame him, although I'm sure he's got a good excuse uh, for it. Uh, and there's also the James Buckley qualifier. So what is the James Buckley qualifier? So that's the, a men's only competition. So the medal's open to men's and ladies. James Buckley qualifier, men only. Now, when you enter the competition on how did I do? Three pounds to enter the medal, pound optional twos. There's also gonna be an extra box this week to tick uh, if you wanna play in the James Buckley, which is gonna cost you another pound and it's gonna come off your bar card, same as the other entry fees. Um, top 15 scores from the medal on Saturday go through to match play stages along with the previous year's winner, which obviously wasn't last year, it was 2019 because it wasn't played for. So there'll be 16 players then go through to match play stages of which there'll be a draw for uh, and that'll be played uh, during, the, uh, during the summer. Now, Sunday, men's medal, uh, medal both days. Uh, we know it could cause some slow play issues. Uh, we're keeping a close eye on the times that it's taking people to finish. Um, so if you see Dan staring out the window on a Saturday, he's making note of what time you're finishing because we're just collating some information ready to get this uh, time par out there. Time par, it will give you some real indications of what time you should be at certain positions on the course. Uh, I know we promised it last year uh, and then obviously the various lockdowns happened, but we're going to um, announce that hopefully next week we'll get that finished off and we might have to tweak it. But... Um, Last weekend, for example, Saturday, I mean, early starters were getting around in less than four hours, then it got up to about four hours middle of the day, then it got a bit over four hours in the afternoon. Um, try and keep up with the group in front. We, we want to try and get everybody around in four balls within four hours, a uh, bit under ideally, a little bit over is not the end of the world, but we want to be cl close to that four hour mark. So um, keep up with the group in front. Most important, if you if you if you losing some ground on the group in front. I know we keep on about this, let the group behind play through or get a move on. Uh, it's gonna be a bit more of a challenge this weekend with medals, so, but do your best guys, because obviously it's always our fault in the shop, so um, please get a move on. Makes my job a lot easier. Um, now, it's also obviously Grand National Day. Uh, we're going to run a, a sweep, I think, not sure how we're going to do that for the Grand National, as usual. Uh, and Sunday, obviously final day of the Masters, um, but we'll have a bit of info on that when we get out onto the course a little bit, uh, a little bit later on. Um, most important down here, Wednesday 14th, 5th, Thursday the 15th of April, you must make sure you've paid your subs by then, but again, we'll have a little bit of info on that later on. So the World Handicapping System still causing a lot of debates and discussions. We're all still learning it. Because um, there is some, it's the biggest change that's happened for many, many years regarding the handicapping system. Um, something last weekend we forgot to remind you about, even though when you entered it, it would have told you, I think, how many shots you did get. Um, but we forgot to remind you that it was 95% um, of your course handicap. So all medal staples and pars now are 95%. So you have to find your handicap index, get your course handicap and then work out 95% of that, which gives you your playing handicap. Fortunately, David, one of our members, has very kindly done all the calculations for us. We've got the white tees, the yellow tees, and the red tees uh, charts printed, and we'll dot them around the clubhouse. Um, and we've also got them for 18 holes for the front nine and for the um, around the clubhouse nine. But more information on that over the, uh, the coming weeks. Uh, 18 hole ones are the main ones that you need to know at the moment. So all you have to do now, handicap index down the left hand side, go across to where it's the 95% oh, column for the medal staple for some pars. Those are the singles ones because it's a bit different for doubles competitions. And that will tell you your playing handicap. So just makes it a little bit easier looking at that and you'll all soon get the hang of it, promise. But don't ask us why it's 95% because we don't know, it's just what we've been told. Now from Monday the 12th of April, the shop is reopening. The barrier is gonna come down. We've had this across here pretty much all last summer. We never opened it at all, uh, just due to the size of the shop. 
So from Monday the 12th, you can come back in the shop, but what we are asking is only one person at a time for now in there, please. So if you see somebody in the shop, just kind of stand back until they're finished. Uh, it is just a small shop. Um, and if we suddenly have three or four people in there, there's no way anybody, everybody's going to be able to show social distance. So one person at a time in there, please. Um, making your purchases, spend as much as you want when you're in there though. Um, now we've got uh, obviously uh, the indoor fitting room, can also do fittings indoors from Monday the 12th. I think next week's pretty booked up now, uh, but so get your booking in for the following week if you do want to try anything out. Remember we've got all the new Ping G425 that appears to be very popular. Uh, we've got the Cobra stuff as well. We've got that one length club, the Bryson one length club uh, that you can try out. And actually we've got a demo set of those if anybody fancies giving them a try if you're interested in trying them before you buy them. And don't forget to wear your mask at all times within the clubhouse and in the so shop. It's Augusta week um, and as usual we're going to discuss the slopes and the similarities between us and Augusta. Um, so we're hilly but also so is Augusta and actually the difference between the highest point and the lowest point on both of our courses is within a couple of feet of one another. So obviously our highest point, the 8th tee, lowest point, the 17th green, uh, is within a few feet of Augusta's highest point and lowest point. So, but you never hear of anybody moaning about going and playing Augusta because of the hills, do you? Now, um, we're going to talk about a sloping lie um, and we're going to do ball above your feet and how do you play it. So we're on the ninth hole here, second shot, ball above our feet. Just make a few adjustments to your setup position and it can make a big difference to your shot. So we've got Sean cutting semi-rough over there. Sorry about the noise. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, so first of all, the ball's a little bit closer to you because of the slope. So move your hands down the grip a little bit. Obviously how much depends on the severity of the slope um, and what club you've got in your hand. So uh, move your hands down the grip. If you don't, there's a very good chance that you might hit the ground behind the ball. Uh, so hands down the grip. Obviously again, because the ball's up in front of you, perhaps get your posture a little bit more upright. Um, and aim a little bit to the right of where you would normally aim. Um, bit difficult here with the out of bounds all up the right hand side. You maybe don't want to risk aiming too far right just in case the ball doesn't move. But uh, with the ball above your feet, the ball will always tend to go from right to left in the air. So aim a little bit to the right of target. And because what's that, that's going to kind of tend to flatten the swing out a little bit this slope and it'll get the hands and arms working a little bit more and perhaps closing that club face, which is why you need to aim a little bit right. I'm saying that if you're normally a slicer of the ball, this will probably just neutralise it a little bit. So you might actually hit it quite straight, if that makes sense. So, uh, so if you do slice it, don't suddenly think this is going to turn it into a draw, but it actually might straighten it out. So when you do get on a ball above your feet and you do slice the ball, and you think, why whenever I've got the ball above the feet, do I hit it much straighter? Uh, it's because it gets your hands and arms working better in your golf swing. Uh, right, a few more things to run through this week. So we've made it up onto the ninth green. If you're wondering why I didn't actually hit the ball there off that sloping lie, it's because I forgot to bring a ball out with me. Um, so a little bit of etiquette, just to remind us, uh, obviously pitch marks on the greens, make sure you have a look for your pitch mark, uh, repair it. Uh, obviously divots out on the, on the fairways, repair your divots. Um, something that Tim and the staff have noticed a little bit though, uh, also on the course, is people taking the trolleys uh, quite close to the greens. Um, now, a bit of an unwritten sort of rule in golf really, is you should try and keep your trolleys kind of outside the, the sort of perimeters of the bunkers really and the greens. No, don't try and kind of go in between a bunker and the fringe of the green if there's not much space with your trolley because if everybody starts to do that, it will create a lot of wear and bear patches. So always kind of go around the outside of the bunkers uh, if possible. Um, and also on tees as well, I've noticed a few um, trolleys going across tees and on tees. So uh, if we're trying to get, improve our tees, try and keep your trolleys uh, off the tees, please, if you can. Right, hi, Tim. Um, obviously back open now. We didn't catch up with you last week. You was busy still out on the course. We've managed to, uh, to grab you for a few minutes today. Um, Obviously, we've reopened with those couple of really nice days. And then, I don't know we keep saying it, but it, the temperature's dropped again, hasn't it? Yeah. Which affects, obviously, the, the, the grass growth, but also your work a little bit as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, first and foremost, all the lads are back to wearing thermals and base layers now after a couple of days of almost shorts weather. Um, it's been bitterly cold. Uh, we did lose uh, an hour's daylight when the clocks changed on the morning. Uh, and that's our free time when we've got a free course until the, the play 
gets out and about on the course. That early session is our free session. And these frosts have robbed us of that as well. Because obviously you can't do the maintenance on the course, can no, you? No, you can't, can't start when it's frosty. Um, so we, we start a little bit later and then play obviously catches us up a bit quicker. So we have been working in amongst play as best we can, but it's, it's not ideal. So, and obviously um, Sunday, there was a good frost Sunday. Um, and uh, there was a couple of buggies out early, which isn't their fault, but it does burn and make the scorch marks, which you, when I edit this, I'll try and remember to put some pictures on of the marks. So there will be occasions, won't there, if there's a good frost, where actually we prefer buggies to be off just for that first couple of hours, perhaps until the frost's gone. Yeah, it, it, it does. It scorches, bruises the grass, leaves, scorches the grass. Um, I mean, trolleys do it to some extent. You can see, the, you know, the three wheels of trolleys here and uh, there. Well, they're even footprints, but then probably not so noticeable yeah. as a heavy buggy, a buggy are yeah. they, on the, on and the course. And buggies, you know, do tend to be zooming all over the place, so they're, they're quite prominent, the scars you get from them. So, uh, but hopefully there's no more frost. Hopefully this weather's going to improve now uh, over these, uh, these coming weeks and get a bit warmer. Um, Behind you, obviously, you can probably see if people are going, what are all those lines on that fairway? Uh, obviously, that was, there's still the scars from the drainage that was done, but it, they are growing in, aren't they? And they'll disappear over the next, uh, the next month or so, hopefully. Yeah, grass is growing in from the sides. So they're already smaller now than they were when we initially did them, so they, they'll gradually disappear as we get stronger growth. <laughs> just the battle with the rabbits making yeah. a mess of them isn't it they yeah. just obviously love that softer sand so uh, as quick as you repair them they're uh, back out at yeah. night uh, damaging them now um, just finally obviously we, we've worked uh, a lot you've worked very hard on doing this the project's plan uh, over for the next few years over the winter haven't you yep um, and, and, and one of the things uh, well there's a couple of things the main sort of plan of, of, the, of, of the projects isn't it is to be, enable us to stay open yeah, the, the priority when a, a, a assessing a criteria for the winter projects is to try and get uh, 18 holes open 12 months of the year. So obviously things like drainage on this fairway, 7th fairway, places where we've had closures or temporaries brought into play, we're trying to get rid of those with our planned projects. Um, drainage obviously isn't as straightforward as we're finding out now, is it? Especially no. with us being a grade one land and triple SI status. So uh, we have to go through all the right procedures now to, uh, to get that, to, that all done. Um, so that's going to help us obviously keep the course open. Uh, obviously the, the, the vertical draining you've done to the greens and all the work done to the greens over the last few years has paid dividends, hasn't it? Because the greens have been fantastic all, all winter really. Obviously there's been no play on them, but they've been really dry yeah. and we would have had greens on, wouldn't we? Um, We'll go back a little bit. Actually, there was temps, wasn't there, the other morning because of the frost. Obviously, you've took the frost holes out of the greens now, haven't we? Which yeah, the had. frost holes came out um, just before play resumed, uh, hoping we wouldn't get any more. Uh, but we'd got a combination the other morning, uh, Wednesday morning, of still some snow cover uh, and some frost. It was, it was quite icy. Uh, so we did drop them on temps. Uh, they were back on by about quarter to quarter to ten they yeah, were back so on the well, proper it greens wasn't long, was it? but what we did see was where people had played temps there was big lumps of ice had come off their shoes and that would have all been on the greens so it, it was worth protecting them just for that first hour or so. very much so so apologies though if you did play uh, early that morning we'd try and not use temps do we but so there's a very occasions where we have to um, one of the things though that was also in the, 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 the plans are the tees. Now that's the next area that we really, really want to try and work on and, and improve, isn't it? And you've started some of them, haven't you now? Uh, sort of verti draining hollow. Did you solid time? Yeah, um, yeah, the tees have always been the poor relation to the greens. The greens are the priority. That's what you get judged on as a golf course is what your greens are like. But obviously tees, very important part. Everybody goes to the tee to play. Um, so yeah, we've started doing some work. Uh, the weaker tees, uh, on the 18th, the second competition tees, the fifth tee, uh, they've been hollow tined, over seeded and top dressed. Um, all the tees have been verti drained and if we get the right conditions again, we'll verti drain them again during the season and then hopefully we can get on them right throughout the winter and keep them, keep them open, keep the air into the roots, allow the drainage to get through. Um, we're looking at giving them a general hollow tine and top dressing as well in the autumn. Uh, Which haven't been done, have they, on this? They've tees for never a long been done. Time. No, never been done. They're just grass growing on the soil that was there from year dot when they were built. So to freshen that up with some new soil going in the hollow tine holes should help them. 
And it's not going to be something that you're suddenly going to notice the difference, are you? Although hopefully this year they will start to look better. But it'll be that pro it'll be that program of work now that's that's going to go run over the next kind of few years, and you'll really start to notice a, a difference. Yeah, I mean, one of the big things which you know has got to be discussed at some stage is irrigation. Um, we do all the work to the T's, and then we get a, a drought they're going to suffer again so we've, we've got to look at some stage in the future for irrigation. Because they're not all irrigated are we? Got no irrigation the, the par threes are irrigated and a few of the par fours but the vast majority haven't got water to them. So some of them really get scorched don't yeah. they in the, uh, in, in the summer if we do get a, a hot spell. Thanks Tim uh, I'll let you get on with it you're just tidying up some of the drainage work over there aren't you now putting some of the turf back from, uh, um, from, from some of the work that was done during the winter and uh, we'll catch up over the next few weeks again. We're going to finish off in the bar uh, this week. Obviously opening from Monday the 12th of April from 11.30 till in the morning till 8 o'clock of the evening. Those times will be tweaked a little bit over the coming weeks as the nights uh, get lighter as well. Uh, table service only, so don't come into the clubhouse. The staff will come and find you out there and serve you with your drinks. Uh, can come into the clubhouse just for the toilet facilities, but make sure you stick your mask on or your face covering. Um, now, uh, the, from food point of view, cold snacks available, so uh, rolls, pork pies, etc., are available from behind the bar as well, but again, uh, from table service. Uh, now, one very important thing, your subs. Um, if you haven't spoke to Jane, if you normally pay by standing order or direct debit, um, that automatically stops in March. So you might think that it automatically carries on, uh, it doesn't. You have to notify Jane if you want to continue paying by standard order and direct debit and Jane will set it up for you. So please make sure you've contacted Jane uh, before the 15th of April because that's the cutoff date. If you haven't sorted out your payment plan by then with the office, um, you'll be knocked off the booking system so you won't be able to book a time and you can't come and play. Uh, so if there's any problems, they say, see Jane in the office, must make sure you do that. Uh, and then last, last one, scorecards, when you're playing the competition, make sure you don't just put Fred in for your name, make sure you put both names in, the date, um, sign it at the bottom. Uh, your player, uh, you need to be player A in your scorecard. You can mark your own scorecard. Player D, you can put whoever you're playing, somebody that you're playing with so that you can verify scores at the end. Just write your name in player A, um, the date on, especially important at the moment because we're having comp Saturday and Sunday. And when they're both medals, for instance, it's easy to get the cards mixed up when we're sorting them out. And it takes uh, John forever on a Monday morning to try and, and sort things out. So make sure you fill your scorecards in properly if there's any problems at all, as usual. Just let us know.